Good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Good morning to you, Sawyer. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Looking Great. Looking red today. Yes, thank you. And with the red lipstick also. Indeed. <laughs> Good to see you. So coming up on The Breakfast this morning, yesterday was World Tobacco Assist Day. And this year, experts are reminding us that the clock is ticking as they expect world leaders to act on commitments to end the disease. We'll have a doctor on the show. All right, and of course, uh, a few days ago, we got news that Leah Sharibu, who was kidnapped by Boko Haram, has given birth to a second child in captivity. That story brought back memories of the teenager who, of course, is yet to be released because she allegedly refused to renounce her faith, Christianity. Why is she being held? And what can the Nigerian government do to get her freed like her colleagues? Some of the questions we'll bring up this morning on the program. And workers at some state houses of assembly are on a warning strike. Members of the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, are protesting against the non-implementation of legislative and judicial autonomy across the country. They say states, legislatures and judiciaries should be independent of the executive. A lawyer will be joining us to take a look at this pressing issue. I'm glad to have you join us once again for The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbon. And of course, it feels really, really good to be here. It's a little windy this morning. Uh, I felt like it was going to rain late last night, but yes. it didn't. And then, you know, the fears, of course, came back this morning. Uh, let's see how it eventually turns out with the weather today. Mm. Uh, if you have to be out of the house in Lagos, you better get yourself on the road uh, as early as possible before you get stuck in the rain. You know how Nigerians act when, when it gets a little windy. And get an umbrella. Yeah, get an umbrella. <laughs> yes, very important. <laughs> All right. Um, let's uh, go into some topics that, you know, are making headlines. The national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu, is dominating our top trending this morning. First, in a press release from the presidency, making it clear that there is no rift between President Muhammad Buhari and the former Lagos state governor. The statement has made it clear that uh, Shiwaju Tinubu remains a strong ally of the president. It goes further to say that reports of a, a mistrust are false and that Tinubu is still one of the most respected political leaders in Nigeria. So, of course, um, we we see things like this happen every now and then, and it's not the first time that you know there have been these rumors. Um, if you also listen to I'll call them beer parlor discussions, you know, and you know armchair analysts across Nigeria, <laughs> you would also hear these things, you know, these rumors come up when certain people are fired uh, from office, yeah. when certain um, you know ministers or you know political office holders are sacked or you know are kicked out of their positions or are being probed um, armchair you know analyst uh, via parlor discussions you know most of them would say oh you know that's an attack on Tinubu's you know grip on on the you know on the presidency and in the country mm -hmm. because these are people that he allegedly put in those positions so it's not the first time that we're hearing of things like this um, my question really is how relevant, you know, is their relationship um, and why does it make, you know, national, you know, headlines and national discussions? How relevant is their relationship with regards to the job that the president is meant to be doing as commander in chief of the armed forces and, of course, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? How relevant is his relationship with the national leader of the APC. And where, you know, I understand yeah, even in the U.S., you know, people would also, I remember when Steve Bannon and uh, Donald Trump fell out, you know, I remember, you know, issues like that happening every now and then. But it doesn't take away the importance of the, you know, what rather the most important question, which is the job of the president. Um, Tinubu has not been appointed by anybody, he wasn't mm -hmm. voted in by anybody. And so why do we have these discussions? Another thing that I'm going to ask is, the the message uh, is stating you know the the fact that oh they are no they are not fighting and there's no rift between both of them mm -hmm. came from um, the Twitter handle of um, a, I mean a federal government Twitter handle. Why? That's another question. Why does that particular? I'm going to have to check the the exact handle um, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Why does that you know um, government handle? you know, tweet things with relationship to Bola Metinubu and 
the presidency? Like, what's its, what's its, what's its business with you know, clarifying that there's no rift between these two people? To be You're honest, a government Osage. Twitter handle. Osage. I'm lost for words when I think about this issue because I think it's part of the sensationalism that we all seem to chase after to pass time while we forget about our worries for a minute. Because I have no idea while Nigerians on Twitter would gush over this matter over an alleged rift between the president and the former governor. How does it become national discourse such that the presidency has to issue a statement about this? From as far back as 2016, we've been hearing there's no rift between the president and Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu, really. Do you understand? And th there's a tweet I came across on Twitter. It said, <laughs> if the presidency denies it, it actually does happen. Yeah, well. The mistrust, well. again, that we're talking about. And, you know, the statement we saw yesterday, he's saying, if the president or if Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu is not going into the villa every day, it doesn't mean there's a rift. But I feel that's something they should sort out. If this has anything to do with the 2023 elections, people trying to establish strongholds, you know, relating to what we're going to be discussing next, I think they should solve this internally and not bring this out in the open. Yeah, and just to clarify, it was tweeted by the Presidency Nigeria handle, mm -hmm. the, the NGR president um, Twitter handle, and saying uh, a led rift between President Buhari and Tinubu, handwork of, um, of um, uh, critics, mischief the makers. mischief makers, that's the presidency the, the wish to make it clear that there's no rift between the president and his strong ally, mm -hmm. Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And, and, you know, you know, once again, you know, there is once, you know, once in a while these rumors of a president and somebody who supposedly, you know, is close to him, uh, maybe mm -hmm. a national security advisor, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm referring to the United States now, uh, maybe one of, you know, his um, election, you know, um, um, managers. I, I still don't think that it should be tweeted by the Nigerian president's Twitter handle. It has no business with the relationship between the president and Tinubu. And, you know, like you said, it, these are things that could be sorted out internally. You know, we don't need to know. It's not of any importance. You know, exactly. why, why should we really be, as Nigerians, be bothered with their personal relationship? If they are guys, they are guys. If they are not guys, that's fine. And apart from that, I've said this before on the show, in, when you come to talk about international relations and politics, there is no permanent friend, no permanent enemy. The only thing permanent is interest. So if there's a rift between any two political figures in Nigeria, it's normal, it's expected. When their interests align, they would become friends again. Absolutely. Let's move on from there. All right. So of course, uh, still talking uh, about Ahmed Tinubu, the, his uh, donation of 50 million naira to support victims of Monday's fire at the Katsina Central Market. In place of praise, that decision is bringing him, him uh, condemnation from Nigerians, at least on social media. Many people have said that he has never announced a donation to victims of many market fires that have occurred in Lagos, where he was governor. They believe uh, his recent donation is just to boost his chances of su success in the 2023 presidential election, even though he has uh, never and still has not announced his intentions to run. This is a tweet from uh, a handle at Sadiq Tade. It captures the thinking of many people who have commented about this. And he says, in quote, Tinubu didn't donate a kobo after the Shasha crisis. He didn't donate when uh, Kesson happened. He was mute during the Abule Adu um, issue, but quick to rush down to Katsina to drop 50 million naira. We can't dictate how he spends his money, but the posture in is too obvious. Hmm. Um, so there is also that. And it's once again, you know, the, the, um, in, in, the things that would always come up, you know, in, in national discourse around Nigeria when people, you know, try to analyze things themselves, mm -hmm. when people try to make, you know, sense of, you know, certain issues here and there. Uh, where people try to, you know, draw, you know, their own conclusion. Conspiracy theorists would always have their own inside gist as to what might be going on. What so, we'll see. so for this issue, <laughs> still relating to the first one, but I think it's 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 of a, a bigger significance, really, because when you talk about election year, it's close to election year. It's normal. I, I feel Nigerians should already be used to things like this. When you hear that one politician stands up to go and build a borehole. Yeah. or, you know, build a school, you know, something like that. We should not be surprised. It's become normal for our politics. This is how people 
win votes. This is how you win the hearts of the people. Even though you've been on ghost mode for the past how many years, even if you've been living abroad, even if you've been living outside your state, Nigerians should already know what to expect, that once it's close to election year, you should begin to get these carrots. You should begin yes. to be enticed. You should begin to see politicians try to seduce you, so to speak. You see people say, oh, he did not you know, contribute anything to the Shasha market fire, this and that, because, quote and unquote, this is me saying what the people said, not my opinion at all, saying he already has the Yoruba people under his feet, so he has nothing. He, he shouldn't, or he's not, he was not obliged to do anything for them. Mm. And that it's a close to election year. He's investing in the North, trying to win votes ahead of time. But we'll also have to consider that this is somebody who has not declared his intention to run for presidency in 2023. You have groups here and there coming up to say that they're, put, they're putting in uh, Ashiwaji Bola Ahmed Tunubu to run for president. You're seeing people saying they're going to contribute money to buy nomination forms, but he's not said anything at all. So we just have to watch and see. And most times they how don't say anything means. until, you know, a lot later. Same way, you know, there's people who have been putting up posters uh, for Yaya Bello. Um, you know, even if yes, he has made, you know, those, um, you know, the slight statements, but a lot of times they don't say anything until the very end when so it's know, up to it's, them it's now, now to official, break yes. the ice. You know, there's going to be those people who would form some level of, you know, supporters club, you know, who, mm -hmm. who want to, um, you know, in the end, you know, let him know that, oh, we supported you just in case he wins, you know, so they would set up uh, billboards, they would set up their own campaign posters, they would, you know, start their own, you know, online campaigns for, you know, you know, a person, mm -hmm. so that just in case he wins, you know, the, the, he, it kind of feels like they owe him or he owes them a favor. That's the way it mostly works in Nigeria. Even in, in state elections, um, there is... Um, and it's global politics, not, not just here absolutely. in Nigeria. I mean, we learn these things from... The, the, you know, the first world conscious and stuff. Absolutely. Even though we've, we usually master the craft of whatever we learn and take it to the next level. Yes, it is. Anyway, let's uh, take a break here. We'll come back with Off the Press.